All right, guys, let's do this. So we got 20 minutes, 23 minutes, which I will probably take every second. So we just, at the beginning of class, we did three things. I had you do a thought experiment about a bullet dropped versus a bullet shot. And at first, the majority of you said that the bullet dropped would hit first, where a few of you said the bullet shot would hit first. And I think one person told me that they would hit at the same time. Then I had you do the little penny flinger activity where you flung a penny and dropped a penny using that very, very intricate uh, piece of machinery that you made. And the majority of you still, uh, you changed your mind because what that showed is that the penny that fell down also hit at the same time as the penny that got flung about, I don't know, four or five meters away. I still didn't give you the answer to your thought experiment about the bullet shot versus the bullet dropped. I then had us watch a Mythbusters episode dealing with that. And the outcome was, yes, a bullet shot versus a bullet dropped will hit the ground at the same time. All right. They were, what, 39 milliseconds apart, I believe? Which, what do you think, why was the reason they were 39 milliseconds apart? Exactly. So because of the, the mechanism that they made to drop the bullet, it wasn't perfect. So that was a big reason as for why they didn't hit at the exact same time. And also, a little tiny bit of air resistance probably played a role, particularly for the one dropping, because it fell on its side rather than falling straight down. And we know if an object falls on its side, it'll have a little bit more air resistance. It's not as aerodynamic. So let's talk about projectile motion. Let's talk about um, what it is. Let's talk about, then we're going to get into some math at the end here. So there's two types of projectile motion. We are only going to deal with one, which is the first type. We are only going to deal with horizontal projectiles, which means there is no angle to the shooting. It is fired horizontally off of a surface. And the second type is a vertical projectile, which means there is some sort of an angle to it, which involves trigonometry. So we are not going to touch that in this class. We are sticking strictly to algebra-based projectiles. So, and you can compare your penny launcher to this, because remember, the penny launcher launched something horizontally, and it dropped the other penny straight down. All righty. So that's obviously the horizontal projectile, and this is the vertical projectile. So we're dealing with the top one. All right. I want to take the next few minutes to talk about, well, yeah, we saw that a bullet shot versus a bullet dropped will hit at the same time. We saw that a penny dropped versus a penny shot will hit at the same time. So I kind of want to talk about the physics here and why that actually occurs. So when you are dealing with horizontal projectile, guys, there are two components to that projectile motion. There's a horizontal or an X component, which is that going to be the vertical or is that going to be the horizontal component to it? Think about a graph. Where, where, where's the X? Is it going up and down or is it going left to right? Left to right. All right. So something that is a horizontal projectile will have a left to right or right to left. It'll have some sort of horizontal motion. And it will also have a vertical or a Y component, which means it's falling. So if we look at this here, all right, so these balls here, the, the different colored balls, can represent the pennies that we used in our little experiment. I want you to take a quick look here at the arrows. What these arrows are called, these are called vectors. And vectors can show you a few different things about an object. It can show you velocity. It can show you distance. Uh, and in this case, we are dealing with velocities. So if we're looking at the penny that's dropped, let's get that out of there. If we're looking at the penny that's dropped, and if we're looking at the penny that's shot, right here. What do you notice about the, the vectors, or the arrow lengths, and the penny that's dropped? They get longer. They get longer. Why, why, do you think, why do you think they get longer? What are they representing? Gravity? gravity? OK. What about gravity? What particular distance or velocity? Velocity. velocity. All right. So as this penny falls, the velocity picked up. Or we can say as that bullet falls, the velocity got bigger. That's why the arrows are showing getting bigger. Now, if we look at this penny being shot, there are two components. This is what I said. 
about a horizontal projectile, there is a horizontal component, which I am going to use green. So there's a horizontal component, horizontal component, horizontal component. What do we notice about the horizontal components to these projectiles? Okay, that it falls the same distance, but it just goes across. You're absolutely right. Let's look at the size of those vectors, those vector arrows. Are they the same or are they different? They're the same, all right? So remember, if we neglect air resistance, what should we do in this physics class? An object with a horizontal component and a horizontal velocity, you will notice that that velocity doesn't change, guys, all right? So if I were to shoot a bullet in some sort of vacuum chamber where there is no air resistance, when I shoot that bullet, it's going to be going the same velocity the second it leaves that muzzle, all right, all the way till it hits the ground, it's going to be going the same velocity in that horizontal component. Now, if we look at the vertical component, which are shown with the downward arrows, what are we noticing about the velocity of it in the vertical component? What's happening to the arrows? getting bigger. Well, that's because gravity, right? If you drop an object, gravity is going to increase the velocity of an object as it falls. So I want you to really understand that an object shot at it with a uh, horizontally, a horizontal projectile, the horizontal speed will stay the same, whereas the vertical speed, as it falls, is going to increase. So there are two components to these horizontal projectiles. A horizontal component, meaning traveling sideways, left to right or right to left, in a vertical component, which means falling because of gravity. Those two components, guys, are completely independent of each other. They have no bearing on, an, on, on each other. So let me say that again. The speed at which a bullet is shot this way, its horizontal component, has no effect on the rate at which it falls this way. So they shot, what, a 45 caliber in, that, in the Mythbusters? A big, slow round. So if I take another gun, what's a fast bullet? What's a fast gun? I don't know. I don't shoot guns. Hunters? Mr. Dueling, what's a quick gun? Seven millimeter? So if we were to do that and shoot a seven millimeter, which would have a faster projectile. So I got a 45 and I got a seven millimeter. 45 slow, seven millimeters very fast. I shoot those at the same time. Which bullet's going to hit the ground first? Good. Clayton just said they're going to hit at the same time. Perfect. Remember, the speed at which they're going this way have no effect at all on the speed at which it falls. So, I shoot a 45. So here's my 45 millimeter. Here's my 7 millimeter. 45 slower. All right? So therefore, what can we say about the distance it goes horizontally? Is it going to be shorter or is it going to be further? Shorter. So it may fall to the ground like this, whereas a seven, seven millimeter might fall like that. However, the time it takes for them to fall if they're being shot from the same distance vertically is going to be the same. Yes? Correct. It's a faster gun, stronger gun, sure. So a seven millimeter versus 45 millimeter, seven millimeter, yeah, it'll shoot further, but they're both going to hit the ground at the same time. One will be further away. One will be closer to the gun. All right? So again, I'm going to say it again. The horizontal component, which is this way, is completely independent of the vertical motion, which is this way. Does that make sense to you guys? OK. So I just say here, notice the vectors. A ball dropped from rest has no horizontal component vector. A ball that is rolled off a table has both horizontal and vertical component vectors. So it's traveling horizontally, and it's falling. Just think, think about what gravity is, guys. We've just spent a whole lot of time talking about free fall. And so you can start to see why we talked about free fall, because gravity acts the same on all objects. It accelerates downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. So regardless of how fast it's moving horizontally, gravity is still pulling those bullets down, those pennies down, those tennis balls down at 9.8 meters per second squared. All right? So you'll see up here. You will see this a lot. The horizontal component is independent of the vertical component. 
What does this mean? Well, I just talked about that. Did it matter how fast you shot your penny off the launcher? No, it did not. I saw some people really taking that flicker and pulling it back and shooting that penny really far. I saw some people being like, oop, like a little dinky one. It doesn't matter. You can shoot it as fast as you want this way or as slow as you want horizontally. It's still going to fall at the same rate that the penny falling will because gravity acts on those objects the same way it pulls it down at 9.8 meters per second squared. So the next bullet says, regardless of the speed of the horizontal component, it will hit the ground at the same time as the object dropped from the same place. What's that? Parabola? Yeah, the parabola is just this right here. So when you, when you, sh yeah, sure. All right. Here, do, I, do, I need, do I need to go back? Do people still need this? Thought I heard a few yeses. All right, here we go. I'm going to give you guys time to think about this. Take a minute here. This isn't, you don't need to write a novel. So here's the situation I want you to think about and write about. It says, you and a friend are standing on a cliff about to jump in the Lake Champlain. Your friend turns to you and says, if we jump at the same time, I bet you five bucks that I can hit the water first. His plan is to drop straight down while you being the smart one that you are will jump outward so you don't smack any ledges. Should you take him up on this bet? So you're standing on a ledge. He's going to step right off and fall while you are going to see that there's some rocks there. So you're going to jump horizontally out and then fall. He says that because he is going to just step right off and drop straight down while you are going to shoot outwards a little bit, he thinks that he will hit the water before you. He's just going to miss the rocks. I know, I know, I know. No blood in this one. So should you take him up in the bet? He thinks because he's falling straight down and you need to push off a little bit that he's going to hit first. Write down your answer, please. Take two minutes, maybe even a minute to write down should you take him up on this bet. So how many of you would take him up on the bet? I think I should see if that's my shark. Yeah. So I should see everybody's hand up on this. Remember, guys, because the good. So <laughs> you think, yep, yep, I would take him up on the bet. So think of, remember this. You are jumping from the same height. He's going to fall straight down while you are going to jump outwards this way. All right. I guess, uh, yeah, I, I guess so, based on my wordage. So ultimately, here's what's going to happen. It's the same thing as the bullet shot versus, or bullet drop versus bullet fired. Same thing as your penny investigation. Something falling from a same height 
versus something shot horizontally and then falling will still hit at the same time. Reason being is, gravity is still pulling both of these down at 9.8 meters per second squared. Remember, your horizontal component, so him traveling this way, has absolutely no effect on how fast he falls. And remember, how fast you might jump outwards, if we collect air assistance, guys, your speed outwards is going to remain the same speed this way until you hit the ground. Okay? So yes, you should take him up on that bet because you are obviously going to hit at the same time. And then when you hit, the shark in Lake Champlain will eat you. All right, we already watched that. Here we go. Let's look at a math problem here. we got a, about 10 minutes left. So it says, a few things to remember. You must remember that an object's horizontal motion, its x component, is completely independent of its vertical motion, its y component. Also remember what equations we have used for both vertical and horizontal motions. So we've used speed or velocity equals distance divided by time for objects moving not in free fall. Vertical equations, we've used d equals 1 half gt squared and v equals gt. Those are not going away, guys. Those are the biggest, most used equations in essential topics physics. Okay, sorry, I heard, I heard the, uh, ooh, come on. I gave you a whole lot to write here. I guess I did. So I am going to make these problems as easy as possible for you. So you are going to notice that I have split up the information into two different boxes. So you will see these. I will give these to you on tests and quizzes to make these word problems easier for you. So separate into X and Y problems, X and Y components. The x component will be solved like a velocity problem. The y component will be solved like a free fall problem. All right? So therefore, I'm going to click through here. So you notice that I have an x component box. So we are dealing with speed and velocity in a horizontal component. Well, we, when we find the speed or velocity of a bicycle, a car, a runner, all sorts of problems that we've done. We've used speed equals distance divided by time. So I'm going to give you that information there. The y component, which is up and down. Think about graphs. d equals 1 half gt squared. And we've also used v equals gt. So all I've done now is just separate out the variables in here. Which things can we fill in immediately before I even give you any word problem? Yeah, I can give you gravity. I can give you 10. Absolutely. All right. So here is the problem. Let's try this one. It says, Mr. Scheich flies off the top of a 19.6 meter tall building at 7 meters per second to the right. How far will he land from the building? Now, the first bit of problems here, you need to kind of just visualize what is going on. So G, I put in 9.8. If you want to put in 10, feel free to put in 10. I'm giving you, I'm jumping off a 19.6 meter tall building. Is that in the X component or is that in the Y component? Yeah, it's on the y component. It's up and down. It's vertical. So therefore, I'm putting it in the y component box for distance. So I know that I am elevated at 19.6 meters. I'm also jumping off to the right at 7 meters per second. So I'm jumping this way at 7 meters per second. X or y motion? X. That's why I put my speed in the x box of 7. All right? So is everyone following me so far as to which boxes to put these in, this bit of information in. You really got to visualize this. Some students have a tough time visualizing up and down and left and right. And you may snicker at that right now, but I bet some of you will have the, that issue, which is fine. We're going to do a lot of these problems. Yes, we're going to do it together. We're going to do it together. So step one, look at your data boxes and fill in what you can. We just did it. So x component box, y component box, which is the vertical motion. So let's look at the solution here. Since we know d and g, we can solve for t, correct? We know the vertical distance that I'm falling from. And we know what g is. So now we are going to use da -da -da, everyone's favorite formula, 
D equals one half GT squared. So 19.6 equals one half of 9.8 T squared. You guys should be able to do this stuff in your sleep by now. We've done this equation tons of times. So I'm just simplifying it to 19.6 equals 4.9 T squared. T squared equals four. Therefore, the time it's gonna take me to hit the ground is two seconds. Remember, it doesn't matter how fast I go horizontally off that building. I'm still gonna fall at the same rate as if I just fell straight off of it. So therefore, my time is two. So let me, let me kind of, here's my building. It's going to take me two seconds to fall straight down. And it's also technically going to take me two seconds to travel whatever this distance is, this horizontal distance is. It's still going to take me two seconds. Two to fall, two to travel whatever that distance is. So therefore, when I solve for t, guys, I can put that t in both of those boxes. So we know what t is, so now I can put t in those boxes. So let me go back now, all right? I'm going to go back to these data boxes. I know we're running out of time, so I'm going to kind of speed this up. So now, watch what I'm going to do. I solve for time. It's going to take me two seconds to hit the ground. Whatever this t is, that's the same. These t's will always be the same. It takes me two seconds to fall. It's going to take me then two seconds to travel whatever distance away from the building. All right? So now, now that I know that I'm jumping off at seven, I'm taking me two seconds to travel whatever distance it is, now I can solve for distance. We know that speed is seven. We, know the dist we don't know the distance that I traveled. We know the time it took me to travel whatever this distance is was two. So what distance did I travel away from the building? 14 meters. There it is. So I traveled 14 meters away from the base of that building. All right, so there we go. So the biggest thing to remember right off the bat is whenever you solve for t, whatever box you solve first, whatever t you get, put it in the other box for t. Because the time it's going to take to fall down is the same time it's going to take you to travel whatever distance away from that building or whatever object it is. All right? I'm sure there are questions. The bell is going to ring in about a minute. We will take this up right where I left off next class. Okay?